Church, let us join together in a word of prayer. Almighty God and gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with the peace that only you can give through your word and through your sacrament. And so, Father, we give you thanks for this time that you call us out of our busy lives to participate in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so this morning, Lord, help us to meditate on this great story of the gospel of a humble servant that you called for a distinct purpose in the history of salvation. And so, Father, with this, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that these may be found acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you alone, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In the beginning... God created everything out of nothing. He created value out of that which was worthless. He created order out of chaos. And ever since then, as a testimony of his desire to create in this way, God has continued to work and give life to the world through means of that which is unvaluable, that which is regarded as a lowly, and nothing. God most often chooses that which is worthless or despised by the world's standards to bring about something precious and blessed and living. And in this small, unimpressive town in Galilee called Nazareth, we find a humble peasant woman by the name of Mary. Now, over time, the name Mary has become something very beautiful that a lot of women have as their name. But originally, the name Mary translates to something similar to bitter myrrh. Uh, So in her original context, this name Mary wasn't something that was particularly beautiful or glamorous. From Luke's gospel, we aren't told anything that is exceptional about Mary. And for all we know, she was just some woman living out in the hills of Galilee. God could have easily chosen one of Herod's princesses. He could have chosen the wife of a chief elder or someone of high influence within Judea. By our human wisdom, this would make more sense. It would ensure that the Messiah was raised in a safe place, an educated place, and a place where he could further his ministry with power and influence. But God, in his perfect wisdom, creates greatness out of nothing so that he may be glorified. Mary had little to no value in the eyes of most people in her context. But at the same time and at the right moment, God reveals her true value in him. From that which is seen as nothing or worthless, God brings about beauty and value. This morning we hear Mary declare, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. And from this declaration, it has been in keeping with the Lutheran tradition to grant title the title, the Blessed Virgin Mary, to the person of Mary not out of any man-made honor on her own, but by this declaration made once and for all in Holy Scripture, and by her virginity when she conceived the Son of God, the Blessed Virgin Mary. But humbly, as well as I believe I know American Christians, I suspect that even giving this title Blessed Virgin Mary may not sit well with some of us. I'm not pointing this out to condemn anyone's discomfort because I once too was not comfortable with giving Mary any kind of positive recognition. It's understandably common for American Christians to have this strong reaction against the blessed Virgin Mary. 
This is largely because of the Roman Catholic Church's mistreatment of Mary, which creates the assumption that anything that has to do positively with the Blessed Virgin Mary must be idolatry. But I find that because of this assumption, a lot of Christians have gone in the opposite direction and take a reactive stance against the mother of our Lord, which tends to downplay her role in salvation history. Sentiments like the following are very common. Mary isn't special. Or Mary was just a vessel for God's use at a particular time. Or my personal least favorite, Mary is dead like all the other saints. These sentiments are all too common in the American church today. And none of them reflect a biblical understanding of the person of Mary that we find in our gospel reading this morning. Earlier, the angel Gabriel declares to Mary that she is highly favored by God. Upon seeing Mary, Elizabeth shouts, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. No, that's not a Roman Catholic prayer book. That's just the gospel of Luke. So may we not make the common mistake of belittling the mother of our Lord out of some notion that it's pious to be anti-Catholic. But instead, may we follow the inspired words of God that teach us who Mary is and what she tells us about herself. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. The song of Mary, as it's been called, has been sung by Christians in worship as far back throughout her church history as we can tell. Those of us with particularly good memory, in fact, may have been able to tell that this song of Mary is one of the hymns that we sing during our midweek Advent services. And if you don't believe me, after the message, you can look it up on page 147 in the Lutheran book of worship. We sing this hymn as a sign that what was once true for Mary by her faith is now true for us by the same faith. Because in Christ, God looks upon the humble estate of sinners with mercy. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted those of humble estate. We have to imagine that when Christians first began singing this hymn together in worship, the world was governed and ruled by powerful pagan kings. These were people who despised Christianity and worked hard to persecute those who worshipped Christ. But we can see how this hymn gave Christians hope that their authority was not the final authority of this world. But in Christ, those who are proud in their conceit are put to shame. And those who are truly humbled by their sin are lifted up to be blessed by God the Father. The mighty Roman rulers eventually did fall from their thrones when the gospel became too powerful for Rome to deny any longer. And to this day, we sing the song of Mary to remember that the corrupt rulers of this age who neglect the poor, who persecute what is true, they have no power over Christ or his church in this age or any age to come. And just as he pulled forth beauty of his creation from nothing, God continues to bring his beauty to those who are seen by the world as nothing. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. The Blessed Virgin Mary was given a unique calling by God to bear Jesus Christ in her womb and give birth to him for all the world to behold and put their faith in 
and to worship. But our honors and titles we give to Mary are not the result of anything valuable or good that we find within herself. Quite the contrary, within the story of Mary, there doesn't seem to be anything at all that's valuable or worth. But she's called blessed by God because of her faith to let it be done to her according to his word. As God once spoke to our people of old by the prophets, likewise today he continues to speak mercy to us, Abraham's offspring, forever by his son Jesus Christ. Upon hearing the word of God, Mary had faith, and the fullness of God began to dwell within her bodily. So in the same manner this morning, may we have faith when we hear the word of God. So that we too may bear the fullness of God for others to witness and come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.